Well, hello, Tim Thymians. So, I didn't mean to do that. A little Klein voltage tester. These are nice. They're only a couple bucks. You put them in, it'll tell you if you have AC voltage. Uh, let's see. I don't know if it's just AC. Anyhow, it'll tell you if you have voltage on the line. Uh, without taking it all apart or bare wire, you can just put it right up against right up against the cord there and it would light up. But anyhow, there's a green and a red LED in here and we used to push it on and the green would come on and then if there was power the red would come on. Uh, I went to use it today while well, I was putting a new stove in upstairs and it didn't work but I don't remember it breaking or anything so anyway I found out I didn't put it all back together. You take the you take the batteries out there's a little release here you push down on that and you wiggle that that'll come off and then the batteries go in. So now let's see if we can figure out how the board comes on. I'm hoping it just pulls out. Give that a shot. Oh, it's coming out. Hopefully I'm not breaking something as I'm manhandling it. Looks like everything's coming out. There it is. Alright, so there it's out. Looks like it has simply room for two AAA batteries and they go with a positive terminal down. Look at it under the scope here and see if I can see anything out. I was imagining that there might be an issue with the switch. Why all of a sudden? I do not know. So let me just try this. Let's see if I put the batteries down like so. Yeah, that's one of those fiber switches in there. Oh, there it is. With the little carbon tips. They don't look to be all all that bad. You can kind of see what they look like there. I don't know if I can zoom in enough. I hate to zoom in and then forget to zoom out. And you can't see anything. So let's see where one of those switches. And there's the contact that it makes right there. You didn't really miss anything. I was just getting test leads. Alright. Let's see. Um, looks like red will be... The green's going to be plus and the yellow's going to be negative. I put just bringing things down here and just pretty much dumping them on the bench thinking I'll put them away later and keep bringing more stuff down. More stuff down. I'm not, not putting them away later. Alright, let's see what we got here. We're going to go, let's see, it's about 15 volts. We're going to knock away down to about 3 volts, which to me that looks like close to 3 there. And we will verify with the fluke meter here, set on to volts. So, we are 
saying the green is positive, so we'll put the green right up here, like so. And the yellow will be negative. All right, I'm going to move the whole camera over so that you're not completely out of view here. My leads are only so long. All right, and then the yellow will go down here. All right, it's working when I do that. Let me try putting the switch on. All right, the switch works. Everything seems to work. So, the uh, back of the battery, I don't know if you can see that, I don't know. It looks, everything looks pretty dark here, but the back of the battery, it looks pretty, uh, I'm not going to say corroded, maybe oxidized would be the word. The other one does not, and I'll show you something which I looked at. Alright, let me uh, unpower this for now because we know it works, and I don't want to unmake it work. Um, if you look at the contact for the rear, and I'm trying to figure out how to do this to give you a little bit of light. Get that out of the way. And I'll point you down into there. Let's see. Inside here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a, a screw. And the screw hits the back of the batteries, and that's connected to these li little uh, tangs, for lack of better words. And I have a feeling that that's the issue. So let's check it with an ohm meter. Maybe oxidation build up on the screw. I don't, I don't know. I don't, but I mean, it looks okay on the front end side. It's just on this side. So let's put this on ohms and check for continuity there. If you're looking at what I'm looking at. Let's try to keep my carry gorilla arms from blocking things out. We'll even put on the, the alert so that some people can hear it. Alright, so there, uh, there's, there I am on the bent leads. Now I'm going to touch the screw. There are parts of the screw that I touch that it, like right there, there I'm on the screw and it's not showing anything. So I think there is some oxidation built up on the screw as well. So maybe I can clean that off and we can try it again. I, I did even try other batteries before because, uh, before I had a test right, I just assumed it was batteries. Oh, how the heck am I going to get that back in there? Probably with a long swivel there. There, look at that. It fell right back in. You missed it. The, well, I, I can't turn it. If I turn it right side up, it'll, it'll fall out again. But the, uh, the switch fell, fell right into place. So next comes this little guy. And how was that? I think that was like this. to have slid all the way in. The switch seems to function, whether it's functioning properly or not, I do not know. So let me take out the screw from this end. Of all the things I do not have right here, the full screw. Ah, I do too. I forgot I said that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So, you 
know what, I'm not going to take it out because it's really hard and I'm afraid it's going to break the plastic and then I will have nothing. So, what I'll do is get a little bit of steel wool and clean this while it's in there. And then I'll proceed to blow it out. Get some steel wool, it's right over here. And then, I will even steel woolify the back of the battery. The other thing I have is one of those, I can't get in there. Where are you? Make a difference? I don't know. All right, I'll clean the back of this battery. And then make it even doubly good. I'm gonna swap around with the other battery first. Well, actually, it'll be last. So let's do this. Let's put these two batteries like this. Let's check for voltage. We should have about three volts. Yeah, that's going to work. I'll be able to pull that. Not. Oh, come on. I think I did see a three on there, though. Another set of hands. did go to almost three volts, so there, so it's working now. And we're going to use this one first. So I'll plop this one down. Remember I said they, can you see, yeah. Remember I said they go uh, with the button side down, the positive side down. And they go, let me take the camera back, the other back a little bit, so. There's a lot of noises down here. See, Larry's been playing with his... Oh, there we go. So I guess I didn't have to take it all apart, but I'll show you how it works. Let's see if I can turn that off. So you see it's green, but when you move it close to some power... See? Yeah, so it's a nice little feature if you want to check, I don't know, even with a piece of Romex or something, if you want to see if it's live. All right, with two new batteries in it. See it turned on. And when I reach up here, you'll see... It even kind of tells you which side the comet is. If you notice when I hit that side, it doesn't light up, but when I hit that side, it does. Good for testing outlets, too. Really. Let me find an outlet that's not being hogged up for something. I don't know. I don't think that outlet's plugged in. It has an extension cord actually that runs over this way. I know there's got to be an outlet somewhere. All right, here's an outlet. Little side here should be hot. So you can just shove that in there. See, and the other side should be common. So you can test your outlet. It's like that. I don't know why some people put them in upside down. I think I think that's wrong, but either way, as long as you do them all the same way. This house, they did most of them. To me, that's upside down. 
But anyhow, so hey, we get this little tool here, and uh, I've used it, had it for a couple years. It works pretty great if you get a chance to pick one up. It's a little, it's a good thing to have in your toolbox. So thanks for watching. Take care.